uh, they don't all come and run the pre-nationals meet, but I think it is good for a lot of people that have to visualize their race beforehand. And we're nearing the halfway point of this race, which makes it even more interesting because some guys are going to start separating eventually. You know, surprisingly, they're not running a blazing fast pace right now. They're, they're coming right over the mat, right around in 1455, 1454, and, you know, it's, it's not blazing. So I think that definitely the individual title is up for grabs. There's a look at your split leaders at this point. Brett Schoolmeister finished in the top five last year. This year, he'd like to be the top guy. Of course, I'd love to win this race, and some people might say that I am a contender, but I'm definitely not willing to go right to the front and see if I can last because I think that risks a lot of... You have a big chance of getting 30th or 40th if you only want to get first. Whereas if you say, I'm going to capitalize on how I feel and go out smart and you know give myself a shot, then, you know, you're a lot less likely to blow up and, you know, really cost your team bad. I mean, for one of our top guys to go from fifth where he should be to 25th is really huge, especially when both the team titles we've won have been by one and four points. You know, we can't afford to have somebody blow up like that. So definitely, yeah, I would definitely sublimate my, my goals for the, for the sake of the team. Which is the reason why Colorado won the team championship last year. 31 teams represented this year. Let's talk a little bit about the scoring, carry. You know, they run seven, seven people out here today. Each team has seven people. They score their five, top five runners, and it's the lowest score wins. So everyone wants to be as close to the front as they possibly can. So we don't anticipate Liberty winning a team championship, but Wisconsin certainly has got a little bit of strategy. Here. Wisconsin definitely has to have strategy out there right now. Simon has to be thinking about the guys behind him. You know, and so does Joseph F. Boyd, who's up there with Arkansas. They have a lot of people riding on them right now. When you ran for Villanova, what was most important, individual or the team? Both. You know, and that was different at Villanova. We wanted to win individual titles, and we wanted to win our team titles. So for me, I had to go after the individual title and hope my teammates behind me just followed along with me. And we know that Simon and the Badgers have a plan because a lot of them will figure in the scoring eventually here. So Iona is not represented by a lot of people, but Kip Legat is one of the best, certainly. He's, he is one of the best, and he knows how to win. And he that is contagious on a team. So no matter what, they're going to see him up front, and they're going to want to go after him. Coaches are yelling, you're in you know, such and such position right now. Your teammates are in such and such position. These guys, as, as hard as they're running right now, they're very much aware, aware of what is going on behind them. And when the coaches are yelling, can you hear them? You can hear them loud and clear. <laughs> it's amazing. Sometimes you don't think you can hear anything, and then one person will stand out, and that will be your coach. So there's a lot of sounds going on, but you can distinctly hear your coach. Anybody getting tired at this point? They're all tired. They're running under five <laughs> Obvious minutes question, per huh? mile. But, um, you know, these guys, they're trying to stay relaxed. They do have a, long, a lot longer to go. We'll continue with the NCAA Cross Country Division I Championships from Terre Haute in a moment. Jim Barber back with Kerry Tollefson. This is a 10-kilometer race. We are approaching 8K, and we're starting to get to the point where people are separating. Well, you know, Jim, they have just under six minutes left in this race, so there are going to be some, some little, you know, gambles out there right now taking place to see if they can break through and, and actually break away from the pack. Simon Beirut is at the front. Anything different he's doing now that we haven't seen earlier in the race? You know, he's probably just, he's probably feeling good and knowing that he only has 2K left. And it's not really, he's not going to make or break the race right now. I mean, I think he's just definitely feeling within himself and he's going after that win. And along with him, Kip Legat near the front, McDougal as well. Then Solinsky, a teammate of Beirut's, Keating and Boyt. Simon Bayrou is defending champion. He's the one everybody's keying on. You talk to one of the coaches here. What's the key for him to win this thing? You know what? They said all year he's been practicing his final kick because he remembered that from last year. And he has over a K to go, and he is kicking hard right now. And if he can hold on, this is going to be something amazing to be a double champion, a defending champion, and win again this year. Team Wisconsin on the left, Team Iona on the right, and the Badgers are going to be flooding the top ten before long, I think. You know, we knew that from all along, but I'm a little bit surprised to not see Arkansas up front here with a couple guys as well. I just, we haven't seen much of them today. Conditions still pretty ideal for running. We haven't seen anybody affected by the weather. In fact, you think about Simon's conditioning in Canada all those years and at the University of Wisconsin, it really seems to have helped. 
Simon probably loves this kind of weather. I mean, like I said, being from mid, mid, the Midwest, this is what we like, being in cool conditions, although I'm sure he wouldn't mind having to show his stuff in some snow and mud if he had to. Richard Kiplagat doing Iona very proud. His coach was uh, super excited about his effort and what he was able to do. You know, we've kind of ignored him a little bit throughout this, and he is one talented runner. We, this is someone that we cannot overlook. He might be the guy to watch today. He might be the guy to put on that final surge and, and take this title. Richard Kiplagat hails from Kenya, which has produced so many outstanding runners over these many years. It's one and two right now. Third place belongs to Josh McDougal. He's our dark horse. And as we get to the middle of the pack, Josh Rohitinski is fourth, Wesley Keating fifth, Joseph Atboyd in position number six. And then we've got another group, and we're starting to see a lot of Wisconsin faces. We're seeing number two and three from Wisconsin, Matt Withrow and Chris Zielinski. Both those guys know how to win, so they're going to definitely go after these guys up front here. Pretty significant if Wisconsin wants to win a team championship to have the rest of the team right up there. They have to start, they have to keep reeling them in. They can never look behind. They have to look forward because that's what happens in this team scoring. The lower the points, the better. And that's what number, you, you win this race, you get one point. You get second, you get two points. So the closer you are up front, the easier it is for your team to win. We're getting closer to the end of the race. How did you feel when you were approaching your first championship? You know what? I was someone that came from behind, and I had a 1,000 meters to go, pretty much like these guys, and I came be from behind and, and surpassed the girl that was in the lead, and it was an amazing feeling. And I don't know if people understand. This is the NCAA championship. This is the nationals, and you're not running only against Americans. You're running against people from all over the world. So it's pretty It's pretty amazing. It's like the, the Olympics of the of the college level. The stretch run is approaching on our NCAA Division I Cross Country Championships. When we come back, we'll find out who's going to win it. Kiplinger.